Hello. Hello. Hi everyone. I'm here with the boys. We're going to make a simple lunch today. Um, this is something I like to make with the kids. I made it with my nieces. It's really easy. Um, we're going to make Dutch babies with some roasted blackberries um, to kind of put on top. So I'm going to do it in two different cast iron pans. If you do not have two cast iron pans, that's okay. Um, feel free to use like a baking tray to do this portion. So in the cast iron pan, I just put some blackberries. Um, you could actually leave these and then pour the Dutch baby batter over that, but I kind of want them to be almost like a jam. So we're gonna do this, and we're just gonna put a little bit of sugar on top. Sugar in? Yep, we're gonna put about a little less than a quarter of a cup in with this. Sprinkle it right over top of that, please. All over, all over. Great, we're gonna grab a spoon here too, just to kind of mix that up. All right, so we have that in there, and then we're also going to um, use some cardamom. This is green cardamom, and so basically you buy it like this, or you can buy it pre-ground. But if you buy it like this, you don't just wait, Arjun. You don't want these little shells. Um, they're just they're not edible. They're fibrous. So basically, what you would do is if you have a mortar and pestle, you just kind of open it up. And there's little seeds in here that you would smash, and that's what you're gonna use to spread on this. If you do not have a mortar and pestle, or if you're just impatient like I am, I mean, typically what I do is I just put them on the counter, give them a smack with my jar, they'll bust open, and that gets you the seeds. You can continue to keep smacking them on a hard surface. Um, obviously, don't use glass for that, you don't want it to break. But I already have some ground. I use a coffee grinder to grind it all, um, so it's fresh that? ground. We're just gonna put in about a mm, little bit more than a quarter of a teaspoon, all over. Spread it all, you're not in one spot, but you gotta sprinkle it, right? We wanna disperse that flavor. So hands have been washed. I'm actually just gonna kinda rub it in here. We're not using a granulated sugar. It's a little bit of a thicker sugar. It's a raw sugar, so it's not gonna kind of adhere to those berries as much as a granulated would. Um, granulated would probably be a little bit better for this. So this is gonna go into a 400 degree oven. I also have another cast iron pan here, and this is gonna be for our Dutch baby. So this I'm gonna pop in that oven too. Um, I'm gonna let these roast, and while these are starting to roast, this is gonna get nice and hot. So 400 degrees, it's already been heated. Here, these are kind of heavy. Yeah, they're really heavy, actually. Really heavy. All right, those berries are gonna take about you know 15 20 minutes, and that's okay because that's about how long our Dutch baby will take to cook as well. So, timing will be good. Um, so to start with the Dutch baby, we're gonna make it all in a blender. This is really easy for kids, um, super fun. Yeah, so grab your blender. Grab your blender, dump the milk in. <laughs> well, we always we always start by dumping our liquid ingredients first, right? Yeah. Do you know why that is? Why? Because it makes it easier for the blender to kind of blend everything. Uh -huh. You have that yeah, liquid yeah, in the bottom it. instead of the dry, it's just much easier. So we got these beautiful yeah. eggs. I got these from yeah. Stephanie of um of oh my gosh. My head my head is like spacing me. Um <laughs> the pottery. Sorry, Stephanie, it's spacing me right now. I should have looked up everything before I started this. You know how that is when you want to say something and then you just totally, woo, we spilled some water. You know, so many people are calling their little episodes of live cooking like quarantine cuisine or quarantine cooking. I think mine's gonna be like chaotic, like chaotic kitchen because that's basically what this is all the time. Chaos, right? Do you know how to crack an egg? We've worked on this. Yep, we yeah? crack it. Um, okay, should we try? Do you yeah. want mom to do one first and then you can do one? Look at how pretty this egg is. Isn't that a beautiful color? Yeah. All right, I'm can gonna I do one. this one? Sure, I'm gonna do one first and then I'm gonna let you do it. But I'm gonna grab a little bowl that we can put our trash in. Because yeah. that just makes it much easier, doesn't it? So we don't end up with stuff all over the kitchen. Hey mom, the same, the hey mom, the same bowl and the same color stripes. You're right, the all right, so, so here we go. We're gonna crack it. Do you wanna tell people what's your name? Arjun and Rohan. This is Rohan, this is Arjun. Okay, here we go. you can't really see All right, it. watch me. We're gonna crack it on the counter one time. 
We're going to use our hands and we're going to separate it like that, right? Mm -hmm. And then the trash into our trash bowl. And I'll grab some paper towels to wipe hands too. And you can actually get down and wash them. When you're done. All right, remember, crack. One pound I don't hard. Want to do it. Hard. Harder. One more time. Okay. And then remember, now separate it. Try not to get the shells in. If we woo! If you get shells in, good job. I don't think you got any shells in there. If you do get shells in, um, you wanna do it here, you do the other one and then you can go wash your hands. If you do get shells in, there's some tricks. So like you can take the eggshell and kind of scoop it out. I actually keep culinary tweezers with me um they just work really nice you can easily reach in and grab it and you're not you know having troubles all right go ahead hard crack all right now into the bowl remember how we learned separate slowly this time don't not so much force there now pull it apart just pull it apart don't smash it don't smash it like that bud okay we're still learning this Woo! there goes the blender <laughs> Chaotic kitchen in full force. All right, go wash your hands, please. I'm gonna wash mine too. You hop to the bathroom. Why don't you tell people, talk to people for a second, Rohan, while I wash my hands? Yeah, it's cookies. What are we making? Um, cookies. No, no cookies. Are we making a Dutch baby? Um, Dutch baby with cookies. With with cookies. Do you like Dutch babies? Uh, and cookies. Yeah. All right. So blender. Eggs are gonna go in. I'm gonna wait for Arjun so he doesn't get mad. All right. I don't get mad. Don't eggs in. Can I put the eggs in? Yeah, toss them in. Pour them right in that bowl. And like I said, if you had shells or anything, just make sure to pick them out. You don't really want to blend those in there. All right. Dirty stuff out of the way. I think and I see. No, there oh. were no shells. You're good. Okay. You did a good job. I got the blender thing. All right. So three shell. eggs. Three quarters cup of milk. You want this to be more room temp, not super cold. So what I did is I just nuked it for a couple seconds. Can I put the milk in? Yep, go ahead. Carefully, please, right in there. Perfect. Now we All got right. milk with eggs mixed together. Now, I also toss in a little bit of butter. Can We're going to put, butter in? just wait, honey. We're going to put butter in our pan as well once, um, I start blending this. I'm going to toss them in. Uh -huh. I usually pour it out of the oven onto the stovetop, melt that butter, then batter in. So here we go. I'm going to add, you know, maybe about a tablespoon in there. All right. Pop that in. Good job. All right. So this leaves me with approximately three tablespoons. I'll maybe use almost all of that for um, the pan. Yeah, kind of a buttery dish. You can think bread. of this as kind of like an eggy pancake. It's really Pan yummy, though. Super easy to make, like I said, for kids. Ooh, let's get a fresh spoon. So I'm going to add some cardamom. And because this is so eggy and we're going to be adding flour, I want quite a bit of this. Cardamom can be, you know, kind of a, a just wait a minute, can kind of be an abrasive spice. It can be very overpowering. Um, especially if you're not used to using it or you're not used to that flavor. If you do not like cardamom or you don't have cardamom, that's okay. Toss in a little bit of cinnamon, a little pumpkin pie spice, apple pie spice, you know, really whatever you have and whatever you like. Um, I personally love cardamom and we might actually put a little bit of rose water in this too. What do you think? Yeah. Yeah. We like rose water. Um, all right, yeah. so dump that in. This is about three quarters of a teaspoon. As a teaspoon. family, we love water. And you have to remember, we did put cardamom on those blackberries too. So this is going to be, you don't want it to be overpowering. Um, so just use a little bit of restraint. I struggle with restraint. <laughs> Rose water, we're gonna use about a teaspoon. So I'm just gonna fill, fill the cap and pop that in. And to make this really pretty, you know, I might even throw in some. Oh my God. You want to help too? Okay. Yeah, but we throw in some. Here, Rohan, you put the sugar. We're going to put three spoons of sugar. So this is about a tablespoon of sugar we're going to add. You don't have to add sugar. I like to add a little bit to mine. Good job. All right, put two more. Can you count for them? One. You know what? You got to fill it up a little bit more than two. that, buddy. All right, scoop it. Scoop it really good. There. And three. And do just a little bit more, because that one you didn't really have anything in. Perfect. Yeah. Great job, buddy. 
All right. So now we have our sugar, our eggs, our milk, our butter, our cardamom, some rose water. We are also going to put some flour in this. If you are gluten free, I have not tested this with gluten free, but you know, I think a lot of the all purpose gluten free flour mixes would work. So feel free to, to use your own substitution. Um, so remember we learned how to measure flour the other day? Okay. So I need three of those. So we're going to do three quarters of a cup of flour. So he's dunking it in and smoothing it off with the knife. Get it nice and smooth. Do it one more. Smooth it really nice. Perfect. Now dump it in. And you got two more of those. While he's doing this, I'm going to actually pull out that giant cast iron pan that we're going to cook this in. And I'm just going to simply heat it up and get that butter melting in it. Two. And I'm going to use these cute little oven mitts that my friends gave me. Yep. And... We use them for midi, right, Tom? We use them for midi, right? Yeah. And while I'm in here, I'm also just going to give those blackberries a little smash. If I can find, I don't even know where my potato smasher is, so we're going to use a wooden spoon. All right, did you get all three of those in there, Arjun? Three. I'm at my third one right now. All right, get that third one in there. Okay, I just finished my third one. All right, I, well, he's just finishing that. I'm just kind of giving these blackberries a stir just to coat like, them with that sugar that we had put in to make, sure that that it, just, for, to make just, sure that it all kind of melts down a bit. Yep. It's nice and jammy. We're getting there. I don't know if you can see. The spoon's looking a bit jammy. All right. You can do this on the stovetop too, and it'll be even quicker. Um, I usually will make this on the stovetop almost like a syrup, a simple syrup with this. Just a little bit of sugar, maybe you know a quarter cup of sugar, about a little less than that of water, and then the blackberries, and you just reduce that down, um, and that's really nice. Okay, you got all that flour in there? What else are we missing? What is an important ingredient when we're making anything and especially sweet foods do you know um can you tell them what's the one thing we're missing um, are we missing salt we're salt. missing salt yeah we why do you add salt? salt do you remember mom taught you the other day why because it'll be too sugary of the rice because it balances the sweetness right yeah because it balances the sweetness so, that's uh, what it sweetness. i use a kosher salt this is diamond kosher it's just a little less salty than a lot of different salts all right, so we're gonna put in about a half what? a teaspoon. We will actually sprinkle a little bit of this on our um, blackberries too uh, when they're done. And yes. I just have to say, how cute is this pot? My friend Megan, she's been like my best friend since eighth grade, bought me this back from Korea. It's a little kimchi pot, but I use it for my salt. Super cute. Anyway, okay, back to what we're doing here. Mm -hmm. I have my pan pulled out. Bottle. We're putting that butter in, so the pan is Blending this. Why don't you tell them Mom, you, the sugar. you want your water? Okay. Here's your water. All right. So now we're gonna blend this. It's gonna be a little bit loud. So forgive us for that. Make sure you forgive put the us. cover on. I always check my blender to make sure that the knobs are, you know, like Can off I before I start this Can because I my kids like to play with it and Can you never know. Sometimes I've had stuff just go. Can All right. Flip the lid or flip the thing. Just some clumps of flour here that I want to incorporate. Yeah, I don't know if we have eggshells in there. There's no eggshells in there. You crack them well. Very nice. Mom watched you. All right, I'm just gonna do this one more time, really quick. Yeah, one more time. Can I? Make sure when you're using 
cast iron to have oven mitts or something. How cute are these, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, we also use them as little mickeys. So my Ooh, butter, okay, boys, 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 I'm gonna bring a hot pan, so be careful. You can see this butter is really bubbly. It's not browned, it's just bubbly and nice and melted. So now I have the heat on back here. So your hot pan, butter in, get it nice and melted, keep the heat on. We're gonna take our batter. So really thin batter, like I was saying, almost like a crepe batter, like a little bit thinner than a crepe. And we're just gonna, no honey, this pan is really hot, right? All right, so we're just gonna dump it in. Now the fun thing with Dutch babies is you never know what you're gonna get. You never know what this Dutch baby is gonna look like after it puffs. Sometimes they puff up super crazy. And you might see it in the oven and think, oh my gosh. But I promise you, when you take it out, it's gonna kind of sink a little bit, kind of like a souffle, right? And it'll kind of form its own little nice hole that you can fill with tons of fillings. So mm -hmm. this Dutch baby is going in the 400 degree oven now for about 20 minutes. Yeah. Um, uh, maybe 15, somewhere in there. Sometimes it takes 10. You just gotta kind of keep an eye on it. Huh. So we're gonna yeah, pop that in. Hop on, on the top, on the top shelf. And I have those berries still roasting. We're gonna set our timer for 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. For 10 minutes. Thank you for the reminder. No, 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 so 10 minutes for that and then we'll check it. In the meantime, um, I don't wanna just turn this off because with the kids you never know what'll happen. I might never get back on here to finish. So maybe, should we answer a couple questions? You wanna answer some questions? No. What is your favorite thing to cook? Hold on, I'm gonna to try to read this. I can't, my eyes are bad. <laughs> I have bad eyes. Okay, um, what's your favorite thing to cook? Um, macarons. You like and to make and macarons. And goat cheese cookies, but I really never made one before. Oh, mom hasn't had you make the goat cheese cookies with me, have I? No. But I've you, watched you before. Yeah? You know all my secrets? Don't tell them. <laughs> I won't. I will never, ever what else? Tell. What else do you like to make? Um, strawberry. You like to make strawberries? You want to get in here a little bit more so people can see you? Macarons are the only ones I like making. Really? Yeah. Oh, I see. And Dutch baby. Dutch babies are fun, aren't and they? And cinnamon rolls. Oh, did we make those the other day? Who did we make those yeah. with? With Fred. So you might have seen him on it. Right? One other thing um, with my Dutch baby, what I do, so when I pull it out, I'm going to leave it in that pan for a little bit. It's not going to stick to the sides because we had so much butter in there. They come out really That's easy. Um, but That's I always hot. like to have just a big baking sheet. This one is well loved. I bought yeah. this in college. Can't really part well, with it. I don't know. Hot. It's kind of warped. <laughs> but it's perfect for like pizzas kind of, and that stuff. So I typically will put my put my Dutch baby on here. And then um, we'll cut it with like a pizza cutter. So we eat our Dutch baby similar to like pizza. And one, nope, I'll get it to her. One Dutch baby in the size pan that I'm making. I want to say it's about a 12 inch, 10 or 12, I have to look. Cast iron. We'll feed my whole family of four. So um, it really just depends on how much, you know, everybody eats or whatever. But for a light brunch, especially if you're serving it with fruits or anything else, this will serve a decent amount. Mom, 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 you can see questions you? Do I have? you want oh you want some questions let me come read because I can't my eyes are bad all right it says what's your favorite food to eat Arjun and Rohan um fish curry and meat and butter fish. Uh -huh, butter <laughs> um yeah so let's see yes Taylor it does it tastes quite a lot like a pancake a little bit more eggy um it kind of reminds me of almost like an egg pizza, I guess. A sweet egg pizza. I know that sounds really weird, but it's delicious. So it's like a pancake that has a little bit of, you know, egg flavor, obviously, because we use three eggs in that. That's hot. Mm -hmm. You want some more questions? Okay, does anyone have questions? They're dying for questions. Put your apron down, sweetheart. That apron Arjun's wearing, actually, my great-great-grandma made it for my grandma. So that is an old apron. Did your grandma ever get to use this, Mom? I'm sure she did. So did your grandma give it to you? She did. 
What's the next recipe we're gonna make for everybody? Well, on Thursday, here, let me come back here so I can see you guys. On Thursday, Fred and I are going to do a souffle. Yeah. Um, Liz from MasterChef earlier in the day is going to be making brownies and like a no churn ice cream. Her class is gonna be more focused towards kids. Fred and I, the souffle, you know, it's not really a kid friendly one. Some kids can manage it, but there's a lot of technique in that. So if you wanna learn how to make a souffle, um, Fred's gonna be doing a really awesome fruit one. I'm gonna do a chocolate one. I'm gonna top mine with that with that ultra trendy like whipped coffee stuff you see like everywhere now. What do you need to tell them? We were gonna do the fruit one that's Fred that Fred's gonna do, but Fred picked it, so we're gonna do chocolate chip now. Not chocolate chip. We're just gonna do chocolate. And Fred yeah. sounded delicious, so I was like, "You do that. I got the chocolate." Um, and I'm gonna also show you with the souffle just to use whatever chocolate you have. Okay. Like you don't have to get the fancy chocolate. It's okay if you I'm like to eat it. It's gonna taste so, good. A How about the chocolate you you get from London? Remember your favorite chocolate? It comes from London. It does come from London. Yeah, and it's even the Queen's favorite chocolate. Too. Oh, is it really? <laughs> He knows the queen. <laughs> Any questions about him for the about the queen? Ask I know him. what she looks like. Yeah. She looks like an old like a nanny. Like an old nanny. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. Let's see. The, she actually the is fruit old souffle nanny. is gonna be yeah. His fruit souffle is gonna be really amazing. Yeah. Um, I really like the sound of it. I'm gonna keep it a surprise, so you guys will have to see it. I believe yeah. he's using mango though. Um, so that would be really cool. If you won't watch, if you're not going to watch this, that's okay. Do you guys stay on for two days, I think, or <laughs> one day. Okay. Do you guys remember the first time I made a souffle? Do you remember that? Before I left for MasterChef? Do you remember what we did? We made fish curry with it. We made fish curry with it. No, we didn't. Um, we made fish tacos. Uh, no, we made molten cakes with the fish tacos. I think that's oh. what you're thinking of. Um, but we did the, the souffles, remember we made it and our oven light doesn't work. So I was really nervous cause I had never made one before. And then we ate it on the floor. Don't you remember? Mm -hmm. We sat on the floor and ate it and it was so Bob good. had a chess tournament. He did. He had a chess tournament. So we baked, right? Yeah. And we ate it on the floor in the living room. We did. So the living room floor has got really messy. We've ate chai out there, pizza out there. Well, we clean it. And we've had um, souffle out there, cake out there. All we like to eat on the floor. <laughs> yeah. All right, I'm just going to check my Dutch baby. I don't really care about the Dutch baby at this point. I know it's going to work. I want to check those berries and just give them a quick stir. I can tell, I can give you a clue if you want why we eat on the floor sometimes. Why do we eat on the floor? We're Hindus, so my dad grew up eating on the floor. <laughs> I don't think that's quite the reason why you eat on the floor. Why? All right, but this is looking table. really nice. I think these are about done. So with the roasted berries, when you do it They're this way, very nice. you're going to get a little bit of sauce, but really those berries are going to be pretty prominent. So I'm just giving them a little smash. I'm going to also give them a taste because I want to um, see if I need to add sugar or anything. Blackberries sometimes can be quite tart. Are there any questions? Boys, I'm going to bring the hot pan over there in just a second, so I want you just to be, I'm going to move you, okay? Are there any questions for us? You know what? This is actually perfect. Yeah. Can it's I a can little I bit tart, but it's not me? over tart. It's oh, so that's sweet. sweet. So I'm going to also ah! add just a little bit of sugar, or yeah. sorry, a little bit of salt to this. Just because you need to put salt in really everything. Just a little. Like that was literally just a pinch. Yeah. Yes, Rohan, you can come do it too. Come on. Right. All right, so I'm going to show you guys. Arjun, I just, I'm going to move you because I want you to be safe, okay? I'm just going to bring the hot pan. One second, Rohan. I'm going to bring the hot pan. I just want to show them what this will look like. So this is the roasted berries. Yeah, that's um, the roasted berries. If you berries. can see, I've smashed them a little bit, but it almost mm -hmm. looks like a jam. Mm -hmm. And you have a nice sauce with that too. So this is going to be perfect with our Dutch baby. 
Now, if you want to, and you want to get really fancy, you can obviously make like a homemade whipped cream, a Chantilly cream, something like that. Mm -hmm. um, Chantilly cream, for people that don't know, is basically you take the cream, you add vanilla, a little bit of powdered sugar. So it's like a sweet rich cream. You what? You want to sit here? I'm going to grab some powdered sugar so we can dust our Dutch baby. Our Dutch baby is really close to being done. It just needs about two, three minutes. Do you want me to play MIDI for you? No, don't play with the MIDI, please. They don't know what MIDI is. Can you tell them what is MIDI? MIDI is a character, a glove character. Does your baba attack you with the mitt at, after dinner usually? Yeah. <laughs> Mitty has become a beloved member of our family, I guess. Yeah, and we even have a spatula somewhere. So I'm just spatula getting, is a sneaky guy. I'm getting powdered sugar and just a fine strainer. Oh, I'm yeah, going to use this nice. just to, you know, dust it. Can if I you look? do not have something like Can this, I hold on, honey. If you don't have something I'm like this, that's okay. Um, you can just kind of sprinkle it with powdered sugar, or you can skip powdered sugar altogether, but it kind of makes it look pretty. So, we're, there's nothing to dust. We have to wait. So, yes, you want to sit by Arjun. Okay. I told you, it's Chaotic Kitchen. Welcome. Welcome. Welcome to Kitchen. People thought I was joking on MasterChef when they asked me when I was cooking for my apron, and they were like, how are you feeling right now? And I'm like, it feels like home. My kids are crying. That was true. It's totally true. Somebody's yeah. always crying, aren't they? Yep. But I was the one who cried the most, right? And why? All right, I'm going to give this just another okay. minute. This is I looking pretty wild in here. I want to get attention. Can I have those? He loves attention. Can I um, so our Dutch baby is looking pretty Can wild. I when I pull it out, I'm going to show you guys what it looks like as soon as it's you know fresh out of the oven. Like I said, you never know what you're going to get. Sometimes they're puffed up crazy. Sometimes they're just perfectly made. Um, this one's puffed a little bit funny. But that's cool because once it sits and some of that air deflates, it's still going to be beautiful. And we're going to cover it up with the food or with the ras or the blackberries, sorry, that we made. And it's going to be delicious, right? It's going to be delicious, guys. And you know, since, since we added a little bit of rose water into it in the cardamom, I really, I tend to fall back to some of those Indian garnishes and Indian flavors, mostly because, you know, obviously, I love them. <laughs> Meeting my husband, it introduced me to so many different flavors that I'm so thankful for that I never knew before, and I just, I really love. So, like, rose pistachio cardamom um, are, like, kind of a trinity. I usually use them together. If I'm using one, I probably yeah, and rose water. And rose water. Right, Mom? So I'm gonna grab some rose petals. These are just dried rose petals. Yeah, dried rose petals. All right, boys, I'm gonna get this hot thing out of the oven. Okay, then can I sprinkle the stuff on it? Not yet, we gotta let it cool for just a minute, remember? I'm just gonna check it I to think make I know sure. So I'm gonna show you guys, Rohan, watch out, buddy. So this is what it looks like straight out of the oven. It's just a really fluffy pancake. So I'm going to let it sit for just a minute or so, and it's going to kind of settle in. So some of that air is going to go. And you just really want to make sure it's cooked. So that took, you know, about 15 minutes or so. Did you eat all these? Can you put that in the trash, please, if, you, if it's gone? All right, so like I said, I'm just giving it just a minute or so. Beautiful. And then I'm gonna take my pan. I'm gonna do this over here just because my kids are here. Typically I would get them out of the kitchen or away from here and bring the cast iron and just do it all right here. Yeah, um, but I'm gonna stay here. But I'm gonna do it over here. Yeah. So I'm just, it basically you just lifts wanna, out. Cause you don't wanna yell at us today, right? I don't wanna yell at you, do Cause this is So it basically just kinda, eat. Oh yeah, it's live, so I can't yell. Did you hear that, guys? <laughs> All right. So I just put it here. It's nice. It's fluffy. It's eggy. Um, like I said, when you take them out of the pan, they kind of will sink down and lose a lot of that air. So you want to serve it right away. Um, ours maybe actually, I think it's good. Okay. So you then we're going to, no, no, no. Get that, get that out of here. Get that out of here. So we're just gonna 
put a little bit, and Arjun will put some more on after I put the berries on. Yep. Yeah. So I'm just gonna sprinkle a little bit of this. There's some melted butter on here, so it's kind of helping that powdered sugar to melt a little bit more. Here, watch out, buddy. Watch out, hot pan. Let's go away from hot pan. Let's go away from the hot pan. Just stay right All right, here. so berries on. Hot pan. Berries hot pan. on. And then I'm gonna powder sugar it. Powder it. Powder. And just kind of give them, you know, move them around, powder. make it look really pretty. Yep. Yeah. You want a little bit of up. berry on okay. each little serving piece. Mm hmm. Mom, this one didn't get that puffy. Well, sometimes that happens, right? I want it to be puffy, though. Well, a lot of the air came out because I removed it from the pan pretty quick. Typically, I mean, you let it sit, it's going to get a little bit more puffy, too. So I removed this pretty quickly. Um, this is also great. You can serve these as like a dessert or a brunch item. Super yep. simple. Obviously, I um, all right. Show them how do you dust that. Can I sprinkle it? Oh, ooh, ooh. You got to get it all over, not no, just in, no. not just, here, stop, honey, stop. He just poured all can the powdered sugar in one spot. More? No, can no, we're good. All right. Yeah, here, Rohan, let Rohan do it now. Here you go. So I have, we have the sugar on. We have the berries on, and then like I said, oh, all right, good job, good job, all done, it's gone, it's gone. So now we're just gonna put some, ooh, Arjun, away from the food, remember? We gotta cover, go wash your hands. If you sneeze, you have to sneeze into your arm, remember? All right, so I'm just putting some pistachio. Pistachio. On here. Pistachio is my favorite. So this is really a rustic dish, but it's also quite beautiful. So we put the pistachio. I'm just taking some of those rose petals. I don't know if you guys see those. And I'm gonna just rub them in my hand like this. So that's crushing them. And then I'm just gonna take some of that rose petal dust and put that on too. If you don't have rose petals and stuff, I mean, don't worry. Don't go out and order them now. Um, unless you really you want to, but the co-op a lot of times will sell these in the bulk bin so you can get exactly what you need. Um, that's how I buy a lot of my stuff. Same with cardamom. Like if you feel like you're never going to use a big thing of cardamom, the bulk bins are your friend. I know right now bulk bins are shut down, so you can't do that. They'll be back eventually. Um, pizza cutter. Again, like I said, I would like to wait a little bit longer for this, so we're kind of fast-tracking this. Um, I'll get the recipe up for you guys, too. And that's what it looks like. Yep, that's what Dutch baby So it's really nice. It's like, it's basically like an eggy pizza. Um, Can I eat a slice? No, we're gonna eat it for lunch. I'm gonna get the table and everything cleaned, okay? I can help so, you clean it. So, simple, 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 really great for kids. Um, great dish to make. I'll get this recipe up. Thank you guys for watching. If you guys want us to do more of these, let us know and I'll pop on with the kids. We'll have some more chaotic cooking lessons. Um, let us know. See you. Can you say bye, guys? Bye! bye. Even though I'm holding my